Fogs is the most adorable game you've never played. There are two portions, one regarding the demo, so no spoilers there, and then one regarding the actual level design and the levels of the game. When one loads up the demo, one can notice art, characters, items, and levels, each with a lot to dissect, both in the demo and the full version of the game. Regarding the art, this game has no sharp edges whatsoever and is very much a dreamscape of its time. It has a very soft atmosphere, both visually and audibly. And regarding to the visuals, there is no difference between the highest and the lowest setting, which either means that this game is fantastic with its art style to the point where you can't realize that the quality is actually down, or maybe my computer was just dumb and it didn't change any settings. Which is a possibility. My computer do be dumb sometimes this 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 thing right here regarding the art style in general it's one of those games that relaxes me after a very long stressful day of work I'm not kidding you I literally turn on the game and all my stress just melts away like butter or cheese or ice cream that has been sitting out stress melts away when I hear the soundtrack. The soundtrack specifically in this game is incredible, mostly due to the fact that it is very calming. It's very serene. It's a kind of soundtrack that you want to put on, and it's one that you never want to stop or pause. With the visuals as well, it pairs very nice with it, but with the audio specifically, it is very interesting because the music is so good to the point where I don't want to listen to my own music normally, I would listen to my own playlists that I've made, right, on Spotify, because my music is also on Spotify, but besides that, that's not really the point I'm making here. I love the original soundtrack of the game. It keeps you in the world, it sucks you into the world, it pairs the visual and audio portions of the game perfectly. It's so good at showing what the world sounds like purely with the music. In general, the game is very abstract, especially with the art style. It's so abstract you can li literally find a, an artist painting a beautiful scenery, which is a pretty great thing to find, to see somebody else admiring the beautiful view. And since the game is generally very abstract, 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 one of those words, it's the same word, just different pronunciations depending on your nationality apparently. The game is generally very abstract, so whenever you see something out of the ordinary, your brain just kind of accepts it because you realize that you are living in this surreal world where sure, there's real life physics like jumping and stuff like that, but there are these weird creatures and this overarching atmosphere that is very dreamy and very surreal due to the fact that you are in a very unrealistic world. It's unrealistic because it's a uh, wholesome, bright, colorful. There's uh, a dog and another dog, but they're one dog because they're the same dog because they have the same body, but different heads. Cat dog, basically. You don't know what cat dog is. You're a Gen Zer, right? You, you, you don't know the 90s, bro. Basically, this game is so freaking cute. Also, the pause menu is very dreamy with no sharp edges whatsoever, which I love when pause menus match up with the aesthetic of the game. I know it's a very little thing that nobody really thinks about, but if you think about it, it's like it makes a lot of sense that a pause menu would relate to the game. Aesthetic wise, it would make sense that the pause menu would be equally as dreamy as the game. Now regarding art, you can't forget about the main character of the story. In Fogs, you play as this conjoined dog thing. I don't know what it's called, but there it is, whoa. Regarding to this conjoined dog, whenever you eat a lot, your stomach grows, which that's another one of those things where it's like, the game didn't really need it, but I think it pairs realism with surrealism in a way. So it makes sense if somebody eats something, their stomach would get full, hence these dogs are getting full. This is a really stupid bit, but I mentioned something about freestyle rapping in this game, which all it is is just like, you know, you bark and you bark and you yo. Yo, actually, oh, that's pretty lit. While you are the dog, you can jump, grab, and stretch. Those are the three things that you can basically do with this dog, purely from the dog's point of view. And speaking of their point of view, their bark is so freaking adorable, and I love it, and it's great. Okay, okay, they get it, they get the point. Shut up! As with the realism, there is a limit depending on how much you can actually stretch 
in the game, which brings it back to the realism in the surreal environment. And as you can tell with the stretchy dogs, there is an obvious theme of teamwork, simply due to the characters being conjoined and the fact that you have to work together in order to get through the levels. And somehow the dog can swim. I don't know how that works because I don't think he has paws or arms or legs. How are how the frick are you swimming? Oh, it's probably like a floaty. You know what else is canon? Oh, my screen turned off. Okay, uh, so unlike me, right? There's actually uh, no dialogue in this game. So that's also canon. So all you get is barking. You, all you, 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 I'm gonna strangle. The final quirky thing about the dogs is that if you're AFK, uh, they fall asleep and that's a pretty cute feature and it doesn't take them long to fall asleep actually and you know how video games do that right video games do that thing where it's like your controllers afk so they're like oh we're gonna do this funny thing but in this instance it's just adorable now listen sure there are the dogs right you gotta have the dogs in the game but in order for the dogs to have more of a functionality since the dogs themselves can't do a lot, there are a lot of items in this game that are very interactable. There are multiple stores and multiple levels, and there's even a store in the demo, I'm pretty sure. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. And what's cool is that the hats are themed per area. So whenever you go to a new area, there are new hats to unlock, and I think that's really cool that you can actually customize the dog. I think that's a really nice feature when games let you customize things, because I I don't know it's fun it's fun to dress up occasionally right yeah and also something that's that's really cute with items specifically i i'm just not realizing is that when you find these prizes right and these items sometimes you have to open them up from capsules and capsules need teamwork otherwise you literally can't open it it's just very symbolic in general of the teamwork in this game that is very prevalent if there's no teamwork there is no way to pass the levels. Also, there are these re weird item rockets. I finished the game and I still have no clue what they do. Uh, so they're there. That's a thing. And at first I had troubles with trying to figure out how to switch ears because like once you put on your ears, right? I tried to switch back to the normal ears because it was like, oh, okay, these, these ears are cute and all, but I want the basics, right, of what I had originally. And it took me way too long <laughs> to figure out how to take off the hat. And all you got to do is just go in the mirror and you can switch hats or just take off the hat. And the last very important item in the game that is very necessary is the relics. And the relics are important to the story, but we're in the demo and the story doesn't matter right now because that's spoiler stuff. One of the last functionalities of the demo are the levels in general and each level has its own quirks and their own individual puzzles to solve because this is a strategic puzzle game and in these levels are their own individual cute creatures some which are interactable and some are not some are literally just there for the sake of, I don't know, background. See, this is a game where you gotta use your brain, right? You gotta use your brain to figure out those puzzles, but the puzzles themselves are never like super overwhelming, which is nice because the game does a very good job at keeping a very chill vibe. Surprisingly, even in tense situations, you still feel this overwhelming sense of calm despite the fact that some things just can go wrong. <laughs> The one thing that I like about the level design is that you can go to whatever area you want specifically, but the catch is once you go to an area, then you have to go in chronological order with the levels. But I just think it's really cool that it's like, hey, I'm not feeling the beach. Let's go dreamland. Yeah, I can do that now. I don't have to play sand dune level all the time. I can switch if I want to. And I think that's very nice, especially because this is a puzzle game and you can get stuck. I did a few times. I didn't look up anything because that's how cool I am. The final stages of the level are actually hinted at throughout the entire journey. And it is so extremely subtle that I barely even noticed it. I think that's really cool when games can be extremely subtle to the point where it's almost unnoticeable until the final moments actually hit. If Fogs interests you, then I got some good news. On this date, at this time, I will be giving away a free Steam key for Fogs. So that way, one person will luckily be able to play the game for free. Or, and, and here's, a, here's a little secret, right? If you become a patron today, you will get a free Steam key to any game I review. 
in the future. This is not only a way to give back to the community, but to say thank you for all of the support over the years in general. If you are interested in participating in the giveaway, then join my Discord server and on this date at this time, a voice call will happen on the server to give away the key. Be there. When you load up the demo, you know that the game is by BitSync, Bit, wait, no, not BitSync, BitLoom and ColSync. When it starts, the softest piano greets you, which is the perfect introduction to how much of a vibe this game is in general. Here, you can either play with a controller or a keyboard. I did controller because that's more fun. And whenever I play games anymore, I always got to go controller because I don't want to have RSI or wrist problems when I'm 30. So what's cool about this game is that you can either single player or multiplayer because I'm a loner who has no friends. I chose a single player and part of me wishes I would have done multiplayer with uh, somebody else but I feel like it would be the same experience as Brothers, which is a very, not similar game, because it's not, but I'm saying functionality-wise regarding the controls, specifically, it is. But once the piano music fades or ends, the music becomes very bouncy, and it's very fun and lighthearted and wholesome and charming. During the demo, there are mini games in the arcade, which is pretty freaking sweet. One of them is you have to get to the ball to the top, and the other one is, um, Tennis? No, not bowling. Why did I say tennis? It's not tennis. Some other random items slash interactable things in this game are water, peppers, bounty tomatoes, grind rails, glow orbs, pegs, keys, springs, and boat oars. Those items specifically are in the demo, and it gives you a good taste of the future items that are to come if you were to actually buy the game or if you were to be in the giveaway, but you know. The other functionality in the demo are the creatures. And the first question I have is, uh, since there's so many creatures in this game, is there a way for me to have cats instead of dogs? Cause I want a cat, like really bad. <laughs> My fiance hates me because I keep telling her that I want a cat and she's annoyed now. And that's <laughs> cause I want a cat, I mean, I'm a cat person. There's dogs here, sure, and that's cool and all, but I want I want a cat. I want this game, but cats. That's that's what I, I want a sequel. I want a, I want a sequel, but I want cats instead of dogs. I want the same story. I want everything, but I, I just I want cats instead. Ah. Speaking of creatures that aren't cats, sadly, uh, you if you walk up to this gorilla, he'll start petting you. Now this is something that I was I was not expecting, but it's adorable. It's it's really wholesome. The game in general is very very wholesome, and there are moments like this out of nowhere, and it's it's kind of pointless for the sake of it does nothing for you except build the world creatively and flushes out the world more because as you can see here, this giant gorilla that could easily kill us is just petting us. Like we're, like we're a cat because I want a cat. No, shut up, Ethan. Stop talking about the cat. There are these pink creatures that love tomatoes. That's their personality. Okay, but like, actually, let's go, let's go back to the, the pet thing. Why, why does this creature love to pet this dog? That's never answered. <laughs> it's never answered. It's just a thing. It's just the thing that the gorilla does. It, it, he just, it, I don't even know if it's a gorilla. That's just what it looks like. Like what are, what are, what is the gorilla or gorilla looking creature? What, what is anything called in this game? I, do I have to go to the wiki to learn every single name? No, the answer is no. Why? Because there's literally nothing on this wiki except for food world, play world, and sleep world. So yeah, there's literally nothing helpful on this wiki. I guess that's what I get for reviewing indie games, right? Or maybe they just don't have names and I have to come up with the names. So you are now Gerald. Yes, Gerald is petting <laughs> Tabitha. Why was I thinking Tabitha? Why? Because I want to cat. Shut! Oh my... Oh my gosh. And then lastly in the demo, goal monsters love to eat. This is like the weirdest part of the game that is weird. Basically, when you end a level, you gotta you gotta go through this like weird uh snake dragon tunnel thing. Um and that's a thing. <laughs> it's pretty acid trippy, I'm not gonna lie. Who thought of this? It just that's how you end the level every time. <laughs> 
I hope this guy wasn't into four because that would be really bad. So overall, the demo combines each land individually and smashes it all together to give you give you a good feel of the game in general, which I think is really nice because usually demos are like, oh, you play the first level now you got to buy the game. But with this one, it's kind of its own experience in a way. Also in the demo, it has its own bone counter, which relates to the store, which is how you buy hats in the first place. The fact that the demo has its own point system that isn't related to the game because how you can play the demo over and over. And there's so much stuff in the demo that is actually like very replayable, which I think is very cool for a demo. All right, so area one, you got Indiana Jones-esque temple, temple run, I, I don't know. Obviously the tunnels are made of stone because what else would they be made of? It's a, it's a fricking temple, it's old. What else is it gonna be? It's not gonna be made out of metal. At the temple, there are these blue bugs that are, these are interesting because it, they're actually hints. So if you follow the blue bugs, you'll tend to figure out where the trail is if you get lost. Like they're kind of placed everywhere. I wish I could turn them off though. That's kind of the thing. They're, they're on automatically. So part of me wishes that I could just turn them off, but I can't. So they're always there and they're kind of cute, you know? So after you clear the first area, then the other three areas open. One is a beach, one is a dreamscape, the other one's a Carnival, oh, I think. All right, area two, which is technically area one, but area one is the, like the first portion you play, which unlocks everything. So this would technically be area one, but I'm calling it area two because it's technically area two. So area two, I think is the sleep world, right? Yeah, sleep world. Now for these specific areas, there are two different factors that come into play most of the time. Sometimes there's three, but generally it's two. It's either vibes or gameplay. Regarding the vibe of the sleep world, it very much falls into this category of escapism in games. James talked about this. Great video, great guy, sub to him, he's great. Basically in the sleep world, it is so dreamy and obscure that all of your just problems melt away and you just feel like you're drifting in the dream world. It's very relaxing. Basically, the dreamscape makes you feel like you're on cloud nine, quite literally. <laughs> Cause there's clouds. I need new friends. Regarding the gameplay of the sleep world, each level has multiple of its own features so that way the game never gets stale. Oh also, you can walk on walls now? Okay, that's actually pretty cool. There are also monkey bars. Look at that. Oh boy, I have stories about monkey bars. <laughs> that's my brother. There was one time when I was like five, right? And I was on the monkey bars and I fell off and I had to get stitches in my chin. Real story. So whenever I think of monkey bars, I think of when I was five and I got injured. I had to go to the hospital and get stitches. I hate monkey bars now. So in the in the second level of the, the dreamscape, right, regarding gameplay stuff, uh, there's this weird, annoying clock that just keeps going off. And this is like the only negative thing I think I have to say about this game, but that was annoying. The fact that that clock just doesn't stop and the only way to like stop it is to like get away from it or find a bed, I think. That was a little obnoxious all the time because it is loud and annoying just like an alarm clock. So, you know what, maybe it makes sense. Maybe I'm just overthinking, I don't know. More creatures, security birds. Security birds are really cool. A pretty unique creature because you can use them to your advantage, but generally you want to kind of avoid them because you know, there's security. The final level of area two combines everything that we've learned, but twists it in a way that makes you feel like that the final level should be handled in a different way compared to all of the levels pre played previously, even though while playing the final level, there is still never anxiety or fear. It's always like a chill experience, which is a very weird thing to say, especially regarding a lot of stuff that happens. I'm not even going to say what happens in the final level because it, it is amazing, but it's a thing. It's a thing I wasn't expecting. Basically, the techniques you've already learned are amplified and you have to mix them in new creative ways in order to finish the final levels. So you take everything that you've learned and you kind of throw it into a blender and you mix it all together. All right, area three, you got the play world with the sandy beaches and whatnot. The vibes here are a sunny beach mixed with screaming seagulls. 
because we we need that <laughs> can't forget the seagulls when you got a beach right it's also a carnival run by scents sentinel scents sentient sentientinals sentient beings i guess who lets you play many mini games where you can win stars and stars in this area help you progress to the next level there's also a very cute and adorable train on a tracks just going in a loop over and over again very nice touch makes it feel very active and a very fun place to be it then transitions to a house in the clouds back on cloud nine baby where everything is destructible i'm talking everything I'm talking taxes, I'm talking chairs, talking tables, talking my emotional and mental sanity. That too. Here, up here in the clouds, shrinking and growing devices are now introduced, which transitions to, hey, we're in a toy bin now, whoa, and there's this wizard that's flying and he's doing some stuff, oh. Pretty sure the wizard was the one who created the growing and shrinking ability. Pr pretty sure that's canon. All right, so regarding the gameplay of Play World in general, I think it is the most fun out of all of the areas. And is that because it's called Play World? Maybe, but also it's genuinely the best one ever. You can do so much, so many fun things to do in general, starting with golf that has a score counter. You can play golf in this game. There's also a hamster ball obstacle course where you Go through an obstacle obstacle course in hamster ball. I mean, I don't really need to explain it. It's kind of there. Air hockey, motorcycle racing, bowling. And while you're doing these mini games, most of the time you're doing it because you need to find a star so you can progress forward with the story and the level and the fun. While trying to find the stars, you go on several roller coasters. There's a crane game, bumper cars, several puzzle blocks, a ball maze. And then last of all for area three, which isn't a mini game specifically. However, you can be frozen to solve puzzles, which is a, a wacky thing that happens, but it makes puzzles and levels more interesting gives you a new element to work with <laughs> literally because it's ice do you get it area four the food world i don't think i need to explain food world i think everybody knows what food looks like right Le okay americanized food I can't believe how American I am. I just assumed that they were a US game developer. They're not, they uh, develop games in the UK. But I think the funniest part is if you go to their website, it's, uh, <laughs> it's for beds. <laughs> hey, Bitloom, uh, you should probably fix your website. This is the world where it introduces tomatoes being grown by water which you use a lot in this world. And this is also the world where the hungry monsters eat the tomato slash food stuff slash not you. They're not cannibals. I'm pretty sure they're vegetarian. I'm pretty sure they're vegan. Each level in the food world has a different food theme. Example, level three is a dessert theme. It's great. <laughs> it's so yummy. Why did I say that's not I can't eat it though. It's not real. I can't eat it. No. And at this point in area four, I'm now realizing that you actually have to collect different things in order to finish the level. So in area one, you had to wake up the sleepy monsters because you were in the sleepy time area, which makes sense. In world two, you have to find all the stars, which makes sense because it's like, hey, you did a good job on these games. You get a gold star. And in world three, you got to find all of the food stuffs, which makes sense because this is the food world. Are you getting it now? Regarding the gameplay in the food world, there is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of new stuff that they throw at you that is very different than any of the other areas. You got to gather and ingredients for some soup there's a food eating contest where you win a trophy there are hot chocolate geysers i want to swim in that holes in the ground where you can place stuff in and out of it it's used like once i think elevators took three to four areas for us to for the devs to realize oh we should probably had elevators hamster wheels a giant candy octopus because food <laughs> juice Presser roller coaster. I love this one specifically. Spiky crushers. There's a violent thing that'll kill you. Fruit magnet because fruit has lead in it now. Apparently, how the frick are they are they picking up the fruit with the magnet? That's never explained. I, th I think I, I think I need to have a word with who's ever making that fruit. I wouldn't want to eat that. Regarding items in the food world, there's a lot to interact with specifically because oh I don't know it's food. 
most of this you either move or eat the possibilities are endless you know just hire gordon ramsay you know to be in the food world he'll 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 cook you up some some uh I don't, I don't watch Hell's Kitchen. I don't know. <laughs> Flaming hot peppers, quite literally, where you can burn food and items and stuff to ashes when you use it. So that's kind of dangerous. Bro, do you, you okay, dude? That, that looks bad. That, should I call the fire department? Uh, uh, gears with grabbable pins that are used for a lot of things, whether or not it's either you're turning something or you're trying to use it as like a way to get across the map. Crushable walnuts, cause you know, we gotta add, we gotta add more physics to this physics engine. You know, we gotta, we gotta crush something. So it, there are a bunch of particles and you're like, wow, that's really cool. Nice particle effect, bro. A giant hammer that crushes chocolate or my dreams or dream because he cheated in Minecraft. Near the end of the food world, there is a very specific event that happens that very much stands out in the level, in the area, in the food world. You can make a giant pizza. My dreams have come true. You can spread the tomato sauce, which made me laugh because it's a bit ridiculous. <laughs> like, what is this? This isn't professional. This is not the professional. You can't roll your body in the sauce. It's like, bro, this isn't a slip and slide. That's not how you spread tomato sauce. The funny thing is you don't even need to cover the entire pizza to proceed, but because I'm a completionist and because I'm very, you know, I get razor focused on things that don't matter at all. Uh, I covered the entire pizza and sauce and it made it look way better in the end, but it was not worth it. It, it really wasn't. And you want to know the best thing about making this pizza? You can put pineapple on it. Pineapple belongs on pizza. Don't at me. Don't cancel me on Twitter. Do not. I see you loading. No. I see you loading up Twitter, don't do it. The thing about this is, yeah, you can launch a bunch of stuff on it, and obviously, you know, it, it's like, it'll make bumps on the pizza like any topping would. But when you cook it, it, <laughs> it just flattens the image. It's like they didn't even, it, it, it didn't try too hard. It's like, well, you put all this stuff, we'll just like flatten the image to make it look cooked. It's just, it's just kind of funny. It's, it's a little funny. And what's very interesting is that the pizza that you make gets delivered to a, um, uh, I, I don't, I don't know what that is. Um, the final area is an underground temple. The vibes in this area are an underground temple, like, that's a pretty specific vibe. It's very ancient. It's very stone ridden. It's very rusty in regards to like it hasn't been lived there in a very long time. There are plenty of rock monsters around because you know it's a temple. Obviously there's going to be rocks. And then also some stone slash robot birds. They're just vibing as well. The gameplay is pretty simplistic regarding the fact that this is an ancient temple. So you're going to do a lot of ancient temple stuff. However, it is very much mixed with what you've already learned. So your techniques have already been established in your mind and you're ready to venture onward. You gotta use movable statues that shine light, use a movable bridge, and then figure out the final puzzle that opens the door. There are three different sections to this puzzle and you have to complete each of them in order to open the door. In these sections, there are bouncy mushrooms that are basically the uh, bouncy tomatoes except they're mushrooms because the aesthetic makes more sense with a mushroom since we're in a cave. In this cave as well, you can use ice crystals to freeze yourself to figure out some puzzles because you know, there are crystals in some caves. Even with everything that you've learned and have item wise and stuff like that, the final puzzles can be a bit tricky. I'm not gonna lie. But honestly, that's kind of to be expected considering this is the final portion of the game strategically. So it would make the most amount of sense that these puzzles would be pretty difficult. They're not super difficult, but they, they take a bit. They take a bit to figure out. I'm pretty sure that this area specifically is my favorite area because this is this is the part where it gets real this is the part where you think you're playing you know it's just some cute little game but it's just like a real life thing just gets thrown at you man and 
it almost made me cry. I'm not going to lie. It was very, very interesting. And I feel like I resonated with it specifically because I'm going through some things in my life, you know? And so because of that, I feel like I very heavily resonated with the ending of the game. Or it's not really the ending, but it's like before the ending, like something happens, right? And this is what I'm going to say. There's emotion. There's there's definitely um, an emotional aspect to this game that doesn't really hit you until like near the end, which makes sense because, you know, you think you're playing this cute little game, right? And you are. But at the same time, you get hit with these emotions that you kind of aren't expecting because your brain is thinking, oh, this is some cute, cuddly game, right? And it is, but it just hits you. It hits you near the end. There comes a point where you get to a certain part of the puzzle and you finally get separated. And when that happened, I was actually, yeah, I was legit sad. What in the world? I opened this door and now they're separated and now I'm literally tearing up. What is wrong with me? What? Hold up. What? Why am I Why? Why am I so emotional over this specific thing? What? I'm not, like, this isn't a bit. Like, I'm not even kidding right now. Like, I'm, oh my gosh, what? It's like after seeing them together for so long, like seeing them split up looks so weird and wrong and just like not normal and it's just, it's messing with me. What in the world? I, I like, I'm shocked. Like I, I, when I first saw it, like, oh my gosh, what? I was actually sad. Cause like, I'm going to open up here, right? I got sad cause it's like, I feel that way. I feel that way with, you know, with Lauren, right? My fiance. I feel that way because it's like, you know, she's away at college. I'm home. You know, I'm working from home. I'm doing some cool stuff, right? You know, I'm making these, you know, I'm just chilling here trying to make a life, you know, but like there was something that hit me emotionally (laughs) at the end where it's just like the separation, you know, and that separation like almost made me cry because I'm like, this is how I feel. Cause like you're with the person, you know, you're hanging out, you're chilling, whatever. And then at the end, it's like they get, they finally get separated. They're finally their own like individuals, you know, they don't really like go their separate ways, but it's just like the fact of them getting separated, just like hit my heartstring. It, it like, it really did. <laughs> and it, it really touched me. And I appreciate that in this game. I really do. It was a really good thing that happened. It really made me think. It really made me connect with the game specifically. And the fact that like, yeah, this game was about teamwork, you know, because the entire time you are with the other person, right? You're working with them. You're doing some stuff, right? Getting along. And then you get separated. No matter if it's like a breakup or just you have a fight. So you feel like emotionally detached or you feel just like literally distant because you're far away from the other person. It's like, I felt that, you know? It's about teamwork. It's about like, we should all get along. We should all try our best (laughs) to be there for the other person, no matter how distant they feel or are. And I think that's what the game teaches us. It's like, yeah, we're doing life together. Sometimes we feel distant, but that's okay. Because eventually, eventually we come back together and everything's okay. There was a man who felt pain all he had With feelings dripping on a riding pad His mental care, all his toil Burns him like the midnight oil Ever since he was a young lad